it's basically a Northcliffe thing. Um, you know, when you walk into a staff room and your name is Frankenstein, it becomes, you know, uh, sort of, what do we do with this? And uh, by the end of the first day, so it was just the staff meetings and so on, Mr. Clark, who was then the senior PT and rugby master, uh, had called me Frankie, and that has stuck. And about the only person that Northcliffe had ever called me Brian was Mr. S. S. Clark. <laughs> So <laughs> for some reason or other, I always wanted to become a teacher. I was dis discouraged by many of my teachers. I was discouraged by a guidance uh, counselor. But uh, my math teacher in grade, grade 11, which was standard nine at the time, was the only one who encouraged me. Um, my dad also encouraged it, saying that you've got a job for life, you don't have to worry about being fired by a, by, by a boss who doesn't like you. So there I was. Here, here I am. And uh, sort of, I, I did my BSc degree, went to the Johannesburg College of Education, JCE, and what happens, happened at the time was that in April each year, the education department um, sent out a gazette with all the posts for the following year. And that particular day, we were doing an experiment uh, at JCE, so testing a new thing called a laser beam. And uh, my mechanics lecturer said to me, do you know that there's a new school out at Northcliffe? The headmaster used to be my Latin teacher at Jeppe High. Why don't you apply there? And uh, having seen that in other schools, um, you, you came in as a junior teacher and you waited until the headmaster died so that somebody else would be promoted and it would take years and years to be promoted, I thought if I go to a new school, um, things might happen more quickly. Uh, so I applied for Northcliffe, I applied for a maths post, I applied for a science post, I even applied for a Latin post. So that Northcliffe was top of my list, and fortunately Northcliffe put me top of their list, and here I was. And I've enjoyed 27 years at Northcliffe. Um, I've enjoyed teaching, I'm still teaching while I'm in Israel, and my happiest times, as they were in 1970, are still in the classroom. Um, I enjoy it. It's sort of, uh, I've always said to my students, uh, whatever you do, be happy with what you're doing. If you get up in the morning and sort of you're earning a, f a fabulous salary, but you can't stand the job, it's not worth it. So I knew I would never be rich, but uh, I'm happy. I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. So at the time, um, I'm a new student. Um, before I earned my first month's salary, I need a bit of money. So my folks gave me a rand as pocket money. and. Uh, at the time, a rand bought a tank full of petrol, bought, uh, bought the week's groceries, um, so it was useful. And then, you know, people would ask, sort of uh, ask me, "Is that the same? Is that the same rand note?" So I'd say, "So it's actually the same shirt." <laughs> 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 so the notice stays in the shirt. So the in the shirt. Um, and then, at one, I think it was one of the um, old boys rugby matches, somebody came to me and said, so is that the same Rand note every time? So I pulled the note out and he copied the number. 
And then I made sure that that note was always in my pocket, the same note. And he came back two or three years ago with a very folded piece of paper and he looked at that number and that was the number on the note. And uh, then sort of, uh, you know, I started going overseas, I'd come back with uh, an Australian 50 peso note or an American one dollar note and that became the note in the new shirt. Um, and uh, sort of again in Israel nobody worries about it so but uh, when I came back in uh, 2003 again I was teaching students you know, of children of earlier students uh, earlier pupils and uh, they asked about the note I said well so nowadays I just keep a credit card in my pocket because it buys a tank full of petrol and it buys a big groceries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I, I took my, so what, what tires I had left, about 150 of them, with me to Israel. They just stay in a box all the time. Sort of, uh, I'm only too pleased to come to South Africa and look for an opportunity to, to wear one. Um, but, uh, so it's, I started off with two or three, I had to buy a couple more suits, so I bought a couple, you know, ties to go with them. And then, um, my sister's father-in-law owned a tie factory. And he brought me a... The, the tie from the 1974 World Cup soccer in Germany. And uh, so that started me thinking, so this, this is special. In fact, that tie I always wore on the first day of the rugby season, for every year after that. But then ties just uh, sort of, I got more ties. I, so when I went overseas, instead of buying teaspoons or so on, I bought ties. Mm. I bought a tie in Thailand, and uh, so then people started giving me ties. Fortunately, I got involved in uh, Transvaal schools, cricket and rugby, so there were ties that went with those, and the collection just grew. And eventually somebody asked, uh, how many ties did I have? We had a competition which linked to to a variety concert, and at that stage it was 274. Because um, I used to, I used, to, I got to the stage where I would say to my class, I don't wear a, a tie a second time. But first, I realised that people were noticing this was in 1977. And I had a science group and after two or three weeks, one of the boys said, he hasn't worn that tie before. And I looked in his science file at the, at the back, he'd had a drawing and a description of each tie that I'd worn so far that year. And uh, so, so I think that, that so that made me realize that things were happening. There was something about my ties. Mm -hmm. so, so Mr. Dickerson wanted, you to, wanted students to leave as whole people, that they get involved as much as possible, and uh, that's why we offered as much as we did. Mm -hmm. Sort of the policy was basically um, if you couldn't find something in the school to do, then you didn't actually want to do anything because everybody could be involved. That's why we had the we we had students who could come in and sort of do the catering, do the first aid, backstage. You didn't have to be sort of the best singer, but if you could help, you could still be involved because it'll sell tickets. So just be involved in your school, feel part of the school, and you'll enjoy your school life.